Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Dan Lynch joins me. We're going to be talking about StackStorm, a way to automate all those little weird things that might be happening in your system and fixing them on the other end. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Dan Lynch. Episode 328 recorded March 11th, 2015. Stack Storm. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at StoneEdge.com, bringing you the big projects, the little projects, projects you may have never heard of, projects you may have been using every day and not being aware of it. This week, no exception to that, but we'll get into that in a second. First, let me welcome back my wonderful and talented co-host, Dan Lynch. Welcome back to the show. Hello, it's good to be here. It's always good to be here. Especially when you it's call been... me wonderful and talented. That's why I come back. <laughs> it's for those little <laughs> compliments. That's what it is. <laughs> There's a reason. And uh, uh, where are you speaking to us from today? It looks like you're a bunk- secret bunker in uh, Liverpool. Yeah, it's my not so secret secret bunker in uh, the center, of, right near the center of Liverpool. If anybody's ever been to Liverpool and you know Lime Street Station, which is our main railway station here, uh, it's not far from that. But uh, I can't give the exact location. That's strictly need to know. Absolutely. <laughs> And I'm, of course, speaking to you from the much darker uh, Silicon Rainforest. Uh, we're, we're an hour earlier because DST just started this week. Oh, let's please eliminate DST. Oh, my God. That's such an amazingly stupid thing now. Uh, nobody wants it anymore. And, and that, now I'm going to get on a rant about that. But forget about that. But, yes, uh, and it's raining outside. So you won't have the usual sun problem that I normally have from this location. Uh, life is good. Life is good. And so the show is not about us or locations. The show is about the guests and the projects they come talk about. So this week, no exception to that, we've got Stack Storm which uh, appears to be something that uh, helps. This is more in the um, uh, sort of the IT uh, DevOps area where you have to hook together a number of events and have that trigger certain things happening, like uh, maybe alerting people or repairing itself if possible, things like that. So uh, I watched a couple of videos on it. I've kind of pawed through the website a little bit. Uh, and it looks like it should be something pretty fascinating. In fact, it may be one of these things that at the end of the show, I'll recommend it to uh, my clients to... Uh, let them take over some of their automation. So uh, what, what do you know about this so far, Dan? Uh, not a terrific amount, if I'm honest. I've had a quick look at the uh, website and some of the other stuff. But, um, yeah, as you said, it does look, uh, for, for DevOps and stuff, it looks like it could be really, really useful. So I'm looking forward to finding out more. Great, great, great. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on Evan Powell. He's the CEO and co-founder of Stackstorm. Welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, and look forward to chatting about it. And where are you speaking to us from? I am in my living room, also in uh, rainy Silicon Valley. So actually having precipitation, as you've noted. Uh, but cool. yeah, our offices are in downtown Palo Alto and mm. um, a little bit north of there. All right. So why don't you give us the 30,000 foot view? What is Stackstorm and what problem is it trying to solve? So Stackstorm sometimes is called uh, If This Then That for DevOps or for Ops. And as you said, we really do... Uh, start with listening to events, and we can talk about what those events are, but let's say it's a monitoring event. Uh, and then we enable you to take actions with the help of a rules engine. So if you don't want to call it if this, then that for ops, you might call it event-driven automation because uh, that is what it is. And underneath there is workflow. I mentioned the rules engine. And there are about uh, 620 or so actions or integrations that you can tie into uh, so far. That's up from maybe 15 when we launched back in November. Uh, yeah, so it's sort of the wiring for your environment. Make decisions in an automated fashion uh, at scale. And so what would some of these events be? You said there's a lot of them. So let's, let's, let's talk about what, what's, what's triggering everything else and then what actions can it take based on that? So as an example, Rackspace last week actually demoed us at their Rackspace Solve uh, event in, in San Francisco, and presumably we'll be doing that at, at some of their other uh, Solve events around the world. And what they showed was uh, a type of auto-scaling. So there, of course, the events are some threshold is getting violated. Um, maybe your app is not performing as well as you would like, and uh, you want to then enable that 
to trigger, turn up some more instances, right? Some more nodes of that application. So that's, that's an example. Um, and that actual uh, whole pipeline, the auto scaling pipeline uh, being open source is available. Uh, you can go to, you know, our community site or our forge or GitHub, et cetera. And you can see not just Stackstorm, the platform, but this auto scaling as an example of something you might want to actually get done. Other examples, we have a big customer user using us for continuous integration, continuous deployment. There, of course, the trigger, the event is somebody checked in code. Um, and then eventually you want that code to be in production or why did you write the code in, in the first place? So uh, that whole pipeline from it's checked in to it's running in production, that whole thing uh, can be orchestrated. And once again, yes, uh, Stackstorm is open source, but also you can grab an entire, and in this case, we have a canary pipeline. It's a particular type of continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, pipeline. So th those are two common use cases, some flavor of auto scaling or some flavor of, of automation of the whole software uh, delivery pipeline. So there, this problem has obviously been solved over and over again. I mean, usually it's, you know, some badly written shell scripts or I dare I say Python scripts or something like that. Mm. Um, what's, what's Stackstorm bringing uniquely to this, to this uh, uh, problem space? Uh, we like Python, by the way. We're, we're going to be I at uh, PyCon. <laughs> we're doing a, a hackathon of Py, uh, Python and we're written in Python. But um, yeah, we actually can start with your existing scripts. So if you've already started wiring together and started facing the sort of n factorial or n squared issue of two or three packages turning wired together turning into 20 or 30 and uh, wrestling with that what we can do is start with your scripts ingest them uh, if they're python actually all the metadata things that enable these scripts to show up with help show up in our cli uh, and so forth uh, we can actually create in an automated fashion we have a utility uh, if there's some other scripts, you may have to enter just a little bit about parameter in, parameter out. You know what, what is what is that uh, script? But then now you have a script library, and your scripts, which um, may have been you know snowflakes, a little idiosyncratic, uh, can now be shared. Maybe more importantly, though, they're now Legos, uh, so you can now begin to combine them using workflow. You know, my hands look huge if I put them near the uh, the camera, but uh, <laughs> you can now take these little scripts that used to do one thing, or maybe in your case, they did multiple things, but you know, yep. ideally you have them doing one or two things, and now you can combine them into an overall pipeline. Again, like continuous integration, continuous deployment, auto remediation, some of these use cases, and you can see um, these scripts, tie them together, and, and have an entire pipeline that you can manage much more easily. Uh, so the one of my clients, and actually, I both of my both of my major clients right now use uh, PagerDuty. Is this something that you would wire into PagerDuty to notify people that something's going on? Yes, yeah. So PagerDuty is a fairly recent uh, within the last month that integration hit. One of our partners is actually writing about who's a monitoring company, writing about Stackstorm in the context of um, how it's useful to use Stackstorm to get events from monitoring. To pager duty, um, and then um, you know, of course, we wire into a lot else underneath, including all the clouds, uh, you know, you, you uh, vSphere, um, you know, your compute environment, your security environment, and so forth. But pager duty is we do see it used as that uh, notification, and even, I guess, I would say escalation management piece uh, sometimes as well. So you might use it, for example, uh, you know, it, it'll, it can try to repair something, but if it fails, then it could notify somebody. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's a big change. You referred to a big alternative uh, for us being DIY uh, scripts, you know, do it yourself. That is the number one alternative for, uh, today. But there was a whole space. And my, my co-founder, Dimitri Zamin, Helped. Um, he ran engineering at uh, a runbook automation, you know, 1.0 company called Opalis uh, a number of years ago. Microsoft bought it as System Center Orchestrator. Now, you know, the BMCs, the CAs, all of these guys, uh, Cisco, they have their own kind of heavyweight um, automation system, and um, pretty interesting technology, actually. 
But one observation we've had is that the big black box making decisions on your behalf tends not to be super trusted in these environments. Maintaining that beast tends to be a burden that folks really don't like taking on. Um, you tend to have to write integrations in you know, special languages. They're difficult to manage themselves. You can't automate the legacy systems. They're, they're automate you. You want to be, I'm trying to point, yeah, you want to be, you want to have their automation, their automate you, but good luck automating, you know, a legacy automation system. You want to look at what those automations are. Uh, again, it's just not an open source or open friendly approach. Um, and so our approach much more is, hey, start with your scripts, level on some intelligence the whole time, seeing what's happening, 100% logging, uh, being able to actually, I mean, actually all the automations and integrations are just files. So they're all being source controlled just in the way that um, everything is in today's uh, kind of DevOps environments. So transparency and being able to grow incrementally from just go do this one thing for me, Stackstorm, to automate this whole pipeline is, is uh, a fundamental difference. We're not top down. We're very much bottoms up. So you, you, hopefully you, you, you come to trust us by using us and by closing more and more loops over time. Mm. So, so Evan, I'm, I'm curious about. Um, I'm, I, I'll, I've told my hand up here that I'm not much of a sysadmin. Uh, I know DevOps is the new thing, Congra but sysadmin. Congratulations, I kind of call it. <laughs> uh, but I, I, in my experience, and I, I love, I love sysadmins, and and I, and I've got a really hard job to do. But they tend to be quite conservative. I found that, that you know they they don't want to necessarily try new things that might not work. So what's adoption been like? Has it been hard to convince people that this is a good idea, or are they are they crying out for this? How how's the adoption worked out? Uh, well, I was actually looking at uh, download stats uh, last night. And um, so we, let's see, in February, we had three times as many downloads as we did in November. November is when we actually open sourced. Uh, um, and if we're on track to do 10 times more in March. So we've done as many as we did in February in the first, I don't remember what the date is, but in <laughs> the first X days of, of March. Um, and part of that is, is uh, of course, Rackspace talking about us um, and, and how they're using us and helping their users use us and, uh, and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, but I also think it's um, really, we mentioned pager duty. I mean, I think there are these little integrations, little mm -hmm. you know, integrations that everyone has, or let's say um, Jenkins to pager duty to New Relic. Oh. That pattern is like super familiar, uh, uh, but Stackstorm gives you an easier way to do it. You can plug it in and actually see the performance of all of these uh, integrations and, and, and so forth, and then extend that over time. So yeah, it, right now we're on this kind of curve where it's just in, in, mm -hmm. insane from a very low base, of course. I mean, before November, when we open sourced it, we didn't have downloads really. <laughs> Uh, but you know we are we are up in the you know ten, tens of thousands uh, per month if if March plays out, so it, mm -hmm. it looks pretty good. And then an interesting thing for for me as um, I don't know as as a entrepreneur um, is you know uh, money. I mean, uh, mm. I mean, I'm in it to to solve a problem that a lot of us have faced, including me back in my I guess this admin or ops days. Uh, too you know too long ago now um, and 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 that's my primary motivation but it, but it is pretty exciting to see folks take us in and really we are the transmission in a couple of fair size SaaS operators already um, mm. and and one you know uh, sort of um, wireless service provider and so forth and once you're in that position they're seeing real boosts in, in agility and and they're seeing sysadmins, you know, have better days. I mean, what, why? So I agree with your basic point, but it sucks to have to maintain your own uh, wiring. Um, oh, yeah. And a lot of yeah. these sysadmins would rather just turn their wiring over to us, have us as a solution that helps them manage that, and then build mm. upon it and do cooler stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I was thinking of the yeah, yeah, definitely, and I, I know that's a difficult job to to do, and uh, and so on. I was thinking about the whole thing of people maybe not trusting the automated system as much as they trust, I don't know, themselves or a, or a colleague or something. But I suppose that builds up over time as well, and and so on. And as, as we were talking about before, as long as it can always notify somebody and say, 
there's something yeah. wrong, that they, they, they'll be fine with it. And not everyone uses uh, chat ops with us, mm. um, but folks are using chat ops with us. And again, um, Rackspace did demo the, their uh, Slack interface that they're providing to a subset of customers, their so-called uh, DevOps services customers. Um, underneath that Slack interface uh, uh, for automation is, is Stackstorm. So that's pretty mm. cool. Um, and... And that, but it directly addresses what you're talking about, where you know the humans are hanging out doing their real work in Slack, and now the automation is telling them that, oh, you know, you asked me to go, I don't know, you know, make a cup of tea. I mean, the water is hot. I just want you to know I'm going to pour the tea in a second, or w what have mm -hmm. you. So you hopefully oh, okay, keep cool. that transparency uh, all the way along, and others, of course. Uh, in the environment, not just the person who invoked the automation, see what's happening as well. So mm -hmm. the automation begins to be treated as uh, a peer, right? It actually shows yeah. up on chat with a little, you know, icon and every user gives it a different interesting name. Hopefully that doesn't violate too many um, <laughs> policies, but, you know, and so the automation is mm -hmm. there as a peer. That's one way people are using it is under chat. We, actually, our current um, development, we're spending a lot of time really hardening and making more enterprise class the use of Stackstorm as automation under, under chat. But otherwise, people use this mm. you know, via tickets or APIs or, or GUI, which was just released or, or what have you. Excellent. And, and one thing I was curious about when I was looking at the, the project was obviously you're, you're in, there's so many things that you need to kind of integrate and monitor and, and so on. Is, is that a challenge for you guys? Because there's so many new things coming up all the time. Say a great new product takes off and, and you think, oh, damn, I'm going to have to monitor that now. Do you guys have to maybe write the code or do you get contributions for that as well? Do you take code from other developers and, and integrate it? Very happy to take code from other uh, developers. Um, we are seeing some of that. There were some hackathons from some major um, folks over the last couple of weeks where we expect to see a number of more contributions largely around, around this point um, exactly. We've also mm -hmm. tried to really simplify the process of, of integrating in. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we, we have, um, so the PagerDuty integration, PagerDuty is pretty powerful does have pretty good APIs, uh, on the other hand. Uh, but nonetheless, pretty rich set of integrations was done in uh, less than an hour, to give, give wow. you an idea. So mm -hmm. our, our Chef integration took four, four hours. I mean, we could do a lot more Chef. Chef is kind of enormous. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives you an idea that we're really trying to uh, simplify this. And at this point, with hundreds of these integrations, you know, the, the box of Legos looks fairly interesting. You can do some cool things. And if we have Docker integration, I haven't mentioned Docker mm. yet. Partway <laughs> through a discussion, I've got to mention Docker, Docker. But um, in fact, Workday will be presenting on us at DockerCon um, here in, uh, in, not for a couple of months, I think it's in June. Uh, but, but nonetheless, yeah, that, that additional integration generally is uh, half an hour, some time frame like that. And we're mm. on IRC, um, but we've probably done ninety percent of the integration so far, um, mm. and we're just seeing um, we're just seeing real contributions come in from others. Excellent, and and this is uh, so the integrations are in Python, are they? So is that what kind of skills would I need to to start integrating stuff? Would it be Python scripting? Uh, that would definitely do it. Um, and there's uh -huh. two flavors, of course. Sort of, I used to always call them northbound and and, and southbound. Uh, integrations, um, mm -hmm. but even in the northbound or the piece where we are uh, responding to events or listening to events, there's uh, active where we're out polling and passive um, as well. So something like New Relic, which uh, has somewhat interesting APIs, um, mm. not super granular, uh, but they at least have a webhook. Or another, you know, a new relic, or, or, or I'm sorry, pager duty, something like that with a webhook. Mm -hmm. That is really a, a trivial little snippet of, of code to do that level of integration. Um, whereas, uh, you know, Remedy, if you've worked with Remedy or, you know, some beast mm -hmm. like that uh, would take a little bit more uh, work. You probably want to have some active, some passive, uh, and then something to take actions uh, as well. Um, 
But we are on IRC. We happen to be follow the the sun. We have people on, um, right around the world. So IRC, Stackstorm, happy to help folks. If they see something and, and then contribute it to Incubator. And so we, we have, you know, contrib are those contributions that we're supplying um, to our users and, and we're standing behind and supporting. But a lot of our own first integrations start in Incubator uh, or in whatever the GitHub shortening of that is. I think it's, I think it is incubator. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. We're ha happy Excellent. to help. Um, uh, and please do dive in. Right. Okay. We have a, we have a, um, a question from the IRC channel. People are chatting away as they're, uh, as they're watching us and listening. Uh, we have a question from retro D who says, I'm interested in how this works with a configuration management scheme. Can it track issues against versions? Um, so, that is a great question, and I haven't man I haven't managed to mention configuration management uh, yes mm. uh, yet. And, and so the first point is, um, as I said, we have a chef integration, uh, you know, multiple puppet integrations, both in terms of our ability to sort of drive and suggest to puppet or chef uh, to make these changes, but also so that if you're deploying a stack storm and you don't want to use our um, you know, our Docker image or a Vagrant image, or you don't want to go straight to source. Uh, well, you basically can use, you know, a Puppet recipe and, 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 or a Chef recipe and, and use that to help deploy uh, Stackstorm. But when it comes to version and making changes based on versions, uh, yes, if there's a, you know, source of truth, hopefully a single source of truth out there in the environment, uh, one mm -hmm. use case is to... Um, and I think this is what the the uh, individual on IRC is getting at, is to look at, okay, when do you see a delta between uh, what the source of truth says ought to be happening and what is out there in terms of uh, version numbers and then, you know, trigger basically an event to go and uh, rectify that, probably, again, using a chef uh, or a puppet or uh, mm -hmm. salt is out there. In, in our repo, and I, um, I don't think Ansible is, but it, but it shortly uh, will be. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully, I try to hit you know two birds one stone. I suppose there. Overall point, just to reiterate, configuration management. We tend to be at a layer above. Um, specific point. What about more or less configuration drift? And if there is a single source of truth, we can help you rectify. Uh, you know, running as a cron. So that's another thing. Is that one of the built-in actions that we have is, you know, timer and the sense of time. So, um, but yeah, you could be running a periodic cleanup task in the background to try to address that drift if it's occurring. Mm, excellent. Um, so one thing we haven't really talked about, you kind of mentioned it, alluded to it a little bit before, but something that we always uh, like to bring up with, with guests is you mentioned the uh, you, you're an entrepreneur. So how do you plan to kind of get income for this or monetize the model? What, what's the model there? Uh, so Stackstorm itself uh, and uh, is 100% open source. It's Apache uh, 2.0, as you, you guys know. And uh, we, we could dive into, you know, arguments about why this <laughs> license, why that license, and, and so forth. But, but our feeling is that this kind of functionality being used in other systems is great. And, and we're, we're happy, to, um, happy to get feedback there. Also, uh, some of our open source, specifically the core workflow engine, which is a honking beast of a... Uh, workflow engine that we then wrap a lot of capabilities around, um, and things like actions and, 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 and some of the sensors and the rules engine and the GUI and the CLI. But anyway, that workflow engine is upstream in OpenStack, and, and it's called the Mistral Workflow as a Service Project. In OpenStack, what I mean is it's the, uh, it's not a core project, you know, like Nova, but it, but it is the workflow project associated with OpenStack. Um, so how, so all of that is 100% uh, open source, always will be, and we're innovating uh, in the open, and we think it's absolutely the right thing to do, in part for business reasons. Um, I, it's my belief that uh, these kinds of users, uh, you know, 
They tend to be somewhat conservative, as you said. Uh, some other characteristics. They're really tired of legacy proprietary software mm. coming in from the top down and um, helping helping them do their jobs. Um, and, uh, you know, bottoms up and being trusted by the folks actually doing the work. Thank goodness these days in software is fundamental. So I, I think, you know, the open source model gets us uh, lots more users and, and that's kind of, uh, kind of fundamental. Um, mm. But what we are seeing is that for a certain type of user who is, tends to be larger, I mean, we have one user who we met on IRC. Um, and they were they were doing some things, and finally they said, "Would you like to know why we're doing this? You know, why are we asking <laughs> you these questions?" I'm like, well, yeah. First meeting, mm -hmm. they pop up an architectural diagram, and they show here. Here you go. We've integrated you in using a lot of the integrations already existed in open source, but to uh, mm -hmm. a hundred a hundred systems. And thanks to you, you know, our level one knock sees the same information as our level two guys, but we're using it for that whole level. We're using it to encapsulate legacy. They have kind of a who's who, an unintentional museum of uh, interesting monitoring <laughs> systems uh, out there. So we encapsulate the legacy and now, you know, and, and then we can over time, you know, remove it. And uh, yeah, and they had done this all themselves. Uh, and now, you know, Stackstorm is their... Uh, transmission. I mean, if it drops out, just like if it, I've never had this happen to me, but I've been told if you're driving along and <laughs> you drop a transmission, you know, your forward progress is impeded se severely. Um, so, you know, for that type of user, they may want us to be on the hook for some level of support and, and we're happy, uh, happy to <clears> do that. Uh, but for lots of other users who might just want, you know, three integrations, they may never feel the need to, um, to contract with Stackstorm, and, and that's fine as well. Hmm. So I was going to say, yeah, there's, there's clearly a case to um, obviously sell your expertise in, in, in this area and with obviously knowing this thing inside out better than anyone else does. Um, so I would imagine, as you say, yeah, there's got to be a support model you could use as well. Yes. Um, now, uh, but with the, the kind of the... the the space that you're in and, and the product that you provide, it's not the sort of thing I would imagine that you're going to offer as a, a service like hosted or something because that would, wouldn't would really fit because the customers are hosting their own services pretty much, so they're not going to want you to host it for them. I don't know. Is that something that would ever come up, do you think? Um, we, we are going to have a um, uh, some more like reporting capabilities in the future, we, we think, um, uh, hosted, but the control plane itself, at least for the kinds of customers and users, you know, that I've built companies uh, serving over the last uh, little while mm. um, uh, or long time, depending on how you look at it. Uh, <laughs> you know, those kinds of, you know, big tier one financials, et cetera. Um, they don't want the control plane today in the cloud. Uh, absolutely uh, no way. And, and so, yeah, we would be the mother of all attack vectors. And if you're already under attack as, you know, a major U.S. bank or someone like that, you, you really, um, you know, you don't even fully trust, you know, an Amazon who's uh, amazing and, and, and you're, you're not going to trust. It's different, you know, for a new relic, although new relic tends not to be in the big enterprise um, either, but, but, um, but a, a new relic, you know, at least they're listening to events. They're not going in and changing your infrastructure. So, yeah, to your point, folks want to run it themselves today. Um, we may have a little bit of analytics, which may tie into um, uh, not really a business model, but a way to get to know who users are. Sorry about the camera uh, movement. Um, so we, we're, we're going to launch some sort of reporting utility for free in the future. But the actual control plane in the cloud the kinds of users that, that we are, are getting, um, or at least, again, paid customers, they, they, they really don't, as of yet, they don't want the control plane out uh, in the cloud. So uh, I was watching the uh, demo video, at least one of the demo videos, and I saw that you were running commands <clears throat> on the local machine and possibly also on a remote machine. That probably means that sort of raises the authentication authorization issues, which is if, if this thing is going around and repairing things as root, uh, how do you control who can add new tasks for that? 
And and so, so wh at what point do you have the boundary between, you know, I'm rude on my box, but I shouldn't necessarily get access to being rude on your box? That's a great question. And, and the authentication piece is really uh, important. And our off um, story right now has to do with basically you establish well, there's a couple ways. One, we could inherit your permissions, or the story I always tell is that we could inherit, you know, my permissions. So I could get to do um, almost nothing, let's say, right? Um, you know, he, he's he's the CEO type. What what he, what could he do? You know, l let him have a sandbox over here, um, and you set up my permissions. Just typical permissions. So I don't I have don't have root access to production. Whatever my permissions are. Uh, Stackstorm can inherit those permissions uh, as as well, um, and so that's pretty typical. You can also set, uh, you know, sort of a pseudo identity up instead of having it uh, inherit Evan Powell's permissions. You could have, you know, Stackstorm permissions and, and and set those up. But we follow your authentication scheme. We do not now in the demo, or you may have seen. Uh, to, to make a powerful looking um, demo and to simplify things, we may demo as if Stackstorm has root, but in fact, very, very typically, we don't have root. And, and by the way, that's part of the power of this approach, whether it's us or somebody else, is that by inheriting your permissions, but also enabling you to do some amazing stuff, um, hopefully we're letting sysadmins feel like, hey, I'm empowered without feeling like, give me root on everything is appropriate. Not that that would pass muster anyway. Um, so being able to empower a user while also uh, effectively, you know, inheriting those, those uh, permission schemes is crucial. And I, I can talk more about that if you want. Yeah, uh, but let me also cover an area that I was curious about earlier in the conversation. Uh, how is this a setup for, say, high availability? Uh, it sounds like there's a single server that's doing everything that sort of has the fan in and fan out. Or, or is this distributed, or can it be set up for high availability? Yeah, that's a crucial point. Most DevOps tools, and there are, you know, probably in the course of this uh, discussion. There will be, you know, there will be one more PagerDuty clone launched, and you know, three more monitoring uh, tools, and two logging solutions. And I mean, there the number um, of these um, special purpose, maybe best of breed for their particular environment and use case tools out there uh, is enormous. But most of these started from something you would run on your workstation. Um, and Stackstorm really started with folks who helped build solutions like, you know, vSphere or um, AWS, for that matter. Um, and so we took the approach that this thing's going to need to be able to scale. It's your transmission, right? Mm -hmm. And so it does scale horizontally. It has its own message bus uh, embedded within it. Um, and we have a user uh, who's got us deployed. Um, actually, with a, with a little bit of uh, help from us in this case, but um, across four data centers, each of seven components, scaling horizontally. And mm -hmm. so your auto scaler better be able to auto scale, as an example. And, you know, that's, yeah, we, we are, we do have the right architecture to do that. Not all of the tooling is uh, to really make it dead simple uh, to do is out there and available uh, in the open source uh, currently, just because you know we've been we've been writing it as we've gotten um, some of these larger customers going, um, but yeah, we we if you peel the covers on this thing, you can see it can scale massively. That is actually a difference, as it turns out, versus the legacy automation solutions, some of which we're replacing. That tend to be, oh, you want scale? You better talk to Oracle about getting a bigger license or whatever. I mean, it's the it's the standard scale vertically, you know, on a, on a bigger box with, you know, a faster database. We're very much today's approach, which is scale horizontally. Mm. And I was looking at your deployment stuff uh, on the uh, on the Stackstorm site there, and I noticed that uh, I don't know why I find this so amusing because it's not it's not that it's not that crazy, but you can deploy within Docker and then monitor obviously another system with Docker on it. So you've got you're all ready to go with Docker. We can't mention deployment yes. without Docker, really, can we? You did say that before. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we can listen to Docker. We can help you 
um, orchestrate. I mean, what we're really doing is orchestrate uh, on, on Docker. But then if you want to play with us on Docker, uh, I will say that from downloads, our download stats, uh, Docker gets a fair number. The, the Vagrant uh, image gets you quite a bit more about I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't look at that level of detail when I was looking last night, but historically, you know, twice as many. Right? So we get a lot of folks using us with Vagrant to just get their, um, I don't know, hands wet or whatever the phrase is. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's obviously flexibility is key and you've got tons of different things going on there. So I was going to say, actually, um, you've probably kind of, you may already have answered most of this, but if say I want to... Um, I want to start using uh, Stackstorm and, and and so on. What kind of things do I need? I mean, if I can just run it in Docker, it must be fairly easy to to deploy and so on. I'm thinking about you know if I need to convince a boss somewhere that I need the equipment to deploy this. Um, yeah, just grab how, a, how does that kind of conversation work out? It's you know grab a grab a v, VM or um, uh, you should have enough capacity, and most of us are just running it on our our laptops for demos and and so forth. So. It does scale down. You know, I was talking about, hey, it scales four data centers. And, uh, that <laughs> yeah. that can be a little bit. Uh, there is RabbitMQ in there, so uh, you know, so there, there, um, which tends tends to be a more scalable um, uh, message bus there. Um, but it 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 will it will uh, slim down and run on a decent laptop um, with with no problem. And then what we've tried to do. And please give us feedback if you if you try us and you see our getting going, getting started guide. Actually, and there's you know big buttons on the site saying you know start now. If, if you click on those or go to our docs uh, site, which is just docs.stackstorm, and you will see a getting a started guide. And basically, it's what the idea is: while you're downloading, you look at this few minute long video, which kind of walks you through what you're going to see once the download's done. You pop into it, and you can now, uh, you know, get some actions in there, and and start playing around on a, on a couple of things, and see that um, you can do the basic things that you already do as a sysadmin or uh, a DevOps engineer if you've decided to rebrand yourself. There's a whole debate yeah. we could have about that, but anyway, and you know, and and hopefully you will see some value in the first uh, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, and again, so getting going guide, a video, easy download, uh, installs, uh, depending on your choice, you know, pick your poison, uh, and you should see some aha if, and you know, the aha may be, well, now I can really share these scripts and turn them into Legos across the organization. And, 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 you know, now I get a pager duty integration for free. If that's the only aha, that's, that's great. You know, use us there. And then, as needed, expand and automate more of your environment over time. Mm. And you mentioned um, horizontal scaling before. Can can you monitor you know your horizontal items and repair them as well? You know your kind of peers, if you like. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. So you get you get pretty darn meta on all, all of this stuff, <laughs> uh, right? Oh, you got to auto scale your auto scaler. But the other uh -huh. thing is you got a CI/CD or CI/CD pipeline. Right, which is an, another fun one where we're used, as I was saying, for continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. Um, mm -hmm. But I also said the actual pipeline, which can be a, a workflow, multiple steps encoded. In our case, uh, it's just YAML, so human readable. There it is, A through Z, you know, with some conditional logic in between. That itself, as well as all the integrations, can be run and actually. We, Users do this, run through the same uh, pipeline. So now the CI/CD pipeline is being used to make sure that the CI/CD pipeline, you know, isn't losing its mind, or that the integration you just added um, ha hasn't, you know, caused problems. And you know that seems kind of cool, but it's actually like if that's how you're running your business uh, in terms of automating. You know, every check-in and doing a lot of them, you know, taking small bites of the apple all the time as opposed to the old, you know, more waterfall-like approaches, you mm. better be able to treat your automation in the same way or it just does not fit. And, and that's mm. why we think we see almost none of the, you know, legacy 
automation systems out there um, who won't even let you, you know, treat your automations, again, the integrations and the automations themselves, as code because they don't fit into uh, this exact work, uh, uh, workflow or use case that I was talking about. Hmm. And, and we've got another question from IRC, Retro D, again, who's, who's asked some great questions today. Um, says, um, is Stackstorm better used from the beginning of a project, or can you retrofit it into an existing development system? So I'm, you know, you can tell I'm, I'm, I'm bald. <laughs> I've been around <laughs> the block a little bit. Um, uh, I believe that, you know, I tend to rail against uh, legacy uh, uh, service providers or legacy packages, but we all have legacy, um, and we all have an environment, almost everyone does. And so, well, actually, I would argue that one of Stackstorm's real differences versus some interesting projects coming down the pipe is that we're not saying, first, you know, create a massive greenfield and then start using Stackstorm and everything will be wonderful. What we're saying is hook into your whatever you have. And to this point, specific point, uh, yeah, you've already started the project. Well, well great. Um, you know, we, we'd love to uh, somehow or maybe, you know, take, take a look at the code and see if it can be of use. But again, we can adjust those existing integrations. We can probably integrate into even your most uh, recalcitrant, you know, legacy app running out there, a piece of infrastructure. And once you have the workflow and the automation disaggregated from that legacy, um, you know, behemoth over there, you now can, uh, over time, turn the thing off, decommission it without screwing up your business logic, without screwing up your pipeline. So, yeah, we embrace legacy. We think heterogeneity is a fact of life. And um, for most, most users, and that certainly includes if you're halfway into a project, you know, please grab it and see if it can be of use. Hey, so uh, we're almost out of time, but I want to make sure we cover uh, sort of like the, uh, you know, some important questions. What's, is Stackstorm usable today? Are, are we at a 1.0 release yet? Or if not, what's going to happen before that? And then what's in the sort of short-term future that people can expect uh, Stackstorm additional development? So Stackstorm is at 0.8. And um, we, it was funny, we were talking yesterday about, you know, should we, should we call it 1.0? Because 0.8 um, has the GUI. So we, we didn't have a GUI until about a week uh, and a half ago, um, a week ago, actually. Um, and wow. so yeah, all of the key components are there. We are being used in production by you know, folks who are paying us to, you know, it's their transmission. Um, having said that, we think 1.0 um, is a big milestone for us. And what will it include? Yet more sort of enterprise uh, integrations uh, into it. Um, it will also be our sort of coming out for really trying to talk about, um, uh, you know, commercial support and so forth. You can find something about support on our site, but it's, it's very obvious it's not our number one focus. We're really focused on adoption. Uh, but the immediate thing that we're working on, which has been kicked off just in the last week, is taking our existing chat ops integration, which, as I said, you know, Rackspace even demoed a week ago, uh, and really hardening that and making that uh, enterprise uh, ready as well and, and more scalable and, and so forth. So you're going to see a lot happening around chat ops over even the next uh, month, uh, I would say. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, we have now, you know, ten, tens of thousands of these downloads hitting um, what we need to be ready for before 1.0, handling thousands of, of users who want us to help them. And so, you know, the back office side of that, uh, we do log aggregation, but, you know, we could do it better. And, and how are we going to be able to build ourselves to be able to handle the demand that seems to be coming somewhat tidal wave-like, at least in terms of community users, uh, is kind of important. Uh, and so that's one reason we haven't you know, said, hey, we're at 1.0 yet, because we, we want to be, as a company, a little bit farther along as well. And uh, so how's the development been going on this? Is it a small core team right now? And are you looking for more people to uh, contribute uh, and update things for you? 
We're absolutely looking for more people. Um, we have the best team, uh, I think, in, in, the, in the industry. If you look at our folks from my uh, co-founder who ran a big chunk of eSphere Engineering for years uh, through the entire organization, uh, it, it, is a, uh, it, is, it is the best team I've, I've worked with, and I've worked with some good teams, you know, including back when I, when I had more hair. So uh, we have an amazing <laughs> team that is cranking around away. If you look at the vitality of contributions and do sort of one of these side-by-side -side comparisons you can do on a couple of sites out there, compare us to like a big configuration management system. You'll see we have fewer contributors but as much contribution. We, we are really cranking. Having said that, probably the biggest moment of the last couple of weeks, one of them for us, other than, you know, it was cool seeing Rackspace demo us on stage, uh, but uh, was hearing of a uh, monster, you know, a few hundred thousand IT shop telling us, hey, we have a hackathon. We have, you know, 12 people contributing to Stackstorm. Now, we haven't actually seen those contributions all come through, but, you know, that's roughly the size of my core engineering team. So we're, hmm. we're starting to see some real contributions come through, largely in integrations, um, but um, a little bit on the core as well. And we do benefit from the OpenStack contributions to, uh, to our core workflow. So, yeah, we're, we're growing, we're hiring, but we're also, you know, at PyCon in Montreal here, not that far away in uh, early April, we're going to have a, sp a sprint more or less mm. a hackathon where we're going to be, um, you know, uh, working with a lot of folks to do some interesting, uh, maybe some IOT type stuff. And we do have users using us with, you know, Blackberry pies and doing crazy things with their, with their, uh, uh, you know, home automation and all, all that kind of fun stuff. So we're, we're going to be doing some fun stuff, uh, at that hackathon as well. Well, it sounds like you're talking to us about the same place that Salt first talked to us, and we helped put them on the map. So hopefully uh, our audience will be as responsive to uh, your plea for uh, additional assistance and see where that goes. So uh, uh, that sounds like a good timing for you. Yeah. No, exactly. That, that, that would be great. I mean, they're a tremendous project, and we've learned a lot from Salt. And, uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Any, any and all help getting us on the map uh, is is wonderful. And, you know, we are a transparent company and, and, you know, a lot of the feedback we get, um, uh, we, we, we turn around very quickly in the course of a day or an hour or less in terms of, you know, Hey, I noticed this, I'm on IRC. doesn't seem to be working quite right. Or what about this or that? So mm. yeah, hit us up on IRC and hold us, hold us accountable. Expect us to be super responsive. That's, that's, the kind of organization we're trying to build, kind of community, frankly, because we're already seeing some folks just helping each other out on IRC, which is um, which is awesome because we all need this kind of wiring. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got we've all got pockets of automation, and we're all using dental floss, you know, uh, to tie them together, uh, or bailing wire, as we, we used to say, or uh, and uh, it's somewhat insane. And, you know, why not learn from, as we have, you know, the Facebooks of the world. I mean, Facebook will, I think, publicly say that if they turned off their, this kind of uh, workflow plus uh, rules engine uh, for auto remediation, they'd need to hire like 400 SREs, right? I mean, mm. this kind yeah. of system's running out there at scale. Why can't we all use a system like this, all contribute to it, uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and thereby, you know, automate more and have less time spent doing boring that uh, computers and software can do and more time doing stuff that's really valuable. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, how do you automate something like somebody fills up the disk? That seems to be the biggest complaint my dev guys have or my ops guys <laughs> have at uh, my primary client. Somebody fills up the disk and then, of course, the database rolls over and everything's not very good. But uh, yeah. can you just... Automate something that just randomly deletes things. That, that I guess would be the wrong problem. To solve. Randomly <laughs> deletes them. <laughs> wrong solution. <laughs> well, uh, you could, yeah. uh, but don't blame it on Stackstorm if you do that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, like I said, we're almost out of time. Is there any question we haven't asked that you want to make sure our audience is aware of before we let you go? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think, um, yeah, open source he, here to, to to help make these environments smarter uh, and, and smarter over time. And and please uh, participate. Tell us what you think, what you don't like, what you do like, 
and so, and share success stories as well, even if um, you know it's sort of you feel like you need to be anonymous right now because you're part of some big bank and it hasn't been an official POC yet. Just telling us um, case studies is really helpful because we're learning a lot from these as, as we go. Well, that's interesting, though. It just occurred to me, do you have a place, a repository, where people can share their recipes or their s solutions to things? Yeah, yes. So when you look at Contrib or Incubator, there are these packs. Packs mm. include integrations, but they also include really your operational pattern or my operational pattern uh, as code. So, yeah, you, you can really, it's a fundamental point, and I probably should have stressed it before, but with this kind of platform now, you can share an entire, as I said, CICD pipeline, uh, your particular flavor of auto remediation as code. And that is, uh, you know, hasn't really been doable. I mean, you can't really share the mishmash of bailing wire and scripts uh, because they have information about your infrastructure. But you can once you abstract away all those details using Stacksform. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a. And then also we will have guest folks. We have some guest folks blogging. If you, you know, if you want to, if you want to blog, we now are getting a gazillion visitors. Um, again, up from almost none. But you know, we, we're we're mm -hmm. getting a lot more visitors. We have a lot of Twitter followers. Um, so happy to, if you, if you have a particular thing you want to talk about, happy to give you the floor and have you talk about it. Awesome. Awesome. So that's more like, uh, the chef and puppet model where you can share like how a project needs to get installed or configured. Now you're talking about how you can share, uh, how to repair something or notice that something's broken. Yeah. And again, it's that whole wiring. So, um, you know, when do you do that deploy? that chef will help you do. Well, you do mm -hmm. it when these, you know, five factors are happening and after you've updated the ticket or, or pager duty or both, uh, or chat, um, as the case may be, maybe mm -hmm. after you've, you know, asked for, we have a Twilio integration. So maybe, you know, you SMS the, the team and ask them, Hey, is it okay to actually do this remediation? Yes, no. Listen to the Twilio. And then you tell chef to do something, but that whole pipeline, can be shareable as code now, which just, you know, was, wasn't the case. And it is analogous to res chef recipes as an example, enabling you to, you know, spin up a bunch of servers with the right flavor uh, on them. Okay. And now for my final two questions that I have to ask every guest or else I get people who sending me email. Uh, what's your favorite text editor? My favorite text editor. Uh, that's a great question. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm saying, I'm using a lot of uh, just, you know, uh, GitHub stuff. So we, anything I can get from, from GitHub, we hack around on, on there these days. Okay. And your, I think I know your favorite scripting language, but let's go ahead and ask that anyway. What's your favorite scripting language? Yeah. Yeah. We are, we are a Python shop. So yep. We, yep. I we, figured we that one was Python. coming. <laughs> 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 if I could ever get the hang of indenting properly, I would be fine with Python. No, there's a lot of other problems where I don't like Python. But okay, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, Evan, it's been wonderful having you on the show. Hopefully this will bring a lot more new pairs of eyeballs. Uh, hopefully two at a time, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, now I'm getting giddy. Uh, here we go. So thank you for being on the show, talking to us about Stackstorm. Thank you both very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on, on Floss Weekly, and uh, thanks, everybody. R really appreciate it. Very cool. That was uh, Evan Powell talking to us about Stackstrom. What do you think, Ann? Dan? Dan? Not Ann. <laughs> Did you call me Ann? No. <laughs> I was going to say, is someone else here that I, I don't know about? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, really interesting project. It sounds like um, it's about to really take off, I, th I think, anyway. So, you know, remember, it could be another one that you saw here first. Uh, before yeah. it kind of, yeah, before it takes over the world. In, indeed, indeed. Well, I, I like, you know, we have a pretty big uh, platform here to have people stand on. And so I'm really happy mm. to offer that to, especially new startup projects like this, that, uh, you know, like, uh, this is why I'm always asking if you're, if uh, you, you, all three of you in the audience, if you can, <laughs> if you, if you have a project <laughs> like this, it's just getting started and needs to have, you know, a little bit more visibility, please, please email me, Merlin at Stunage.com and let me know about this. But uh, the one thing I'm taking away from this uh, particular episode is I'm seeing all these sort of handwritten, you know, uh, ad hoc things being done at my primary client right now, ZipRecruiter, 
And it's it's sort of they're trying to integrate Slack. They're trying to integrate. Um, they have BuildBot, which is a Python thing that they use to take care of all of their um, uh, developments mm -hmm. and deployments and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like this would drop right in and sort of centralize a lot of the things that they're sort of doing arbitrarily. It's, it, and it would certainly save some leverage of time. I mean, if you have something that's already an off-the-shelf solution that gets you 80% of the way there, then you can just spend your time on that last 20% rather than having to start and build the whole 100%. The so, reason I, I'm, I'm a fan of open source in the first place is that it's all about leverage. It's all about standing on the shoulders of giants, of people who have come ahead of you doing, doing the same thing and, and not having to, uh, uh, you know, invent everything from scratch, right? Mm, mm. And uh, definitely, and I, I like the fact that it seems almost so configurable, you can do almost anything with it. So we were talking about monitoring other instances of, of Stackstorm with Stackstorm and, and your, all that stuff, and then you've got your monitoring your Docker instance through another Docker instance and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the way it's going to be. It's, it's the way the future's going. If you want to be scalable and flexible, you, you've got to be, yeah, you've got to be willing to adapt. And uh, that sounds really cool. Exactly. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be uh, chatting with my friends at ZipRecruiter there and letting them know that this exists and see if they can uh, integrate that in uh, along with the rest of their system. Uh, my other client, probably not so much, although, you know, we've got five machines now for uh, Insight Cruises. And it, uh, it's uh, we do have, like, we have PagerDuty, which is why I asked about it. And uh, it'd be nice to have sort of more automated repair for the things that need to, that are broken or something. And we're probably eventually going to look at scaling issues. Like, and we start getting lots of people hitting those sites, we're going to have to... Um, uh, going to have to, you know, have some way of spinning up more instances. So sounds like uh, this could be the thing I want to do. Yeah, all sounds really good. Uh, speaking of things that sound good, uh, next week, uh, I don't have a guest yet. Uh, the plan B, Dan, you want to describe what the plan B is? Uh, right. Well, as far as I know, the plan B is for... Um Simon possibly and I to discuss I don't know something uh, <laughs> something <laughs> something open source something you know free software something related obviously uh, but um, yeah we're we're working on topics right now we'll have a list of uh, of topics to, uh, to to discuss and of course people yeah, can always ask us things if they want oh yeah you could have like an ask Simon and Dan show mm, that'd be kind of cool yeah. just sit in the chat room the whole day that'd be kind of cool not the whole day <laughs> what I mean like the hour that we're supposed to be taping yes uh, I'm going to be on a cruise ship next week so that's uh, Dan you've gladly volunteered or graciously volunteered I don't know if gladly is part mm. of this phrase anymore but graciously volunteered to uh, host the show while I was gone uh, and then but mm -hmm. I'll be back in a couple of weeks uh, we're going to do the Moheed water modeling system which is a apparently a physics engine that you describe your your landforms and things like that, and then you can run water over the top of it and see where it goes. It should be sort of fun. I hope there's some good video demos and things like that. And then finally, we do have a new date for Docker. Speaking of Docker, that we've <laughs> several or eight times in this show, uh, we do have a new date for Docker. It's uh, weirdly April 1st. <laughs> I was hoping that oh, wouldn't God. be the alignment, but we'll see. I'm pretty sure they're going to be on this time. They've, we've rescheduled that one, I think, now four times. So there we go. But we just added to the schedule, besides Docker being re-added to the schedule for the fourth time, we have uh, Randy Harper. Our, uh, she's been in absence yeah. from this show for quite a long time. Uh, she's been busy with a, a, her current job and busy with a new job, but she's really busy right now with a something uh, that's known as Gamergate. I don't know much about it. Uh, I know there are a lot of people who care deeply about what's going on. Uh, I'm... I, I only hear about it in passing, but uh, she has started an organization for online abuse prevention. And she has a bunch of open source stuff that uh, she wants people to contribute to. And so she's going to come talk to us about that. So she'll be back on, not as a host, but as a guest, talking to us about online abuse prevention. So that'll be really interesting. Yeah, uh, I, I'll have to definitely spin up on Gamergate before she comes on. Otherwise, I'll mm. seem like a fool. Well, I'm like a fool anyway. So uh, that's all we have on the shortlist right now. we still got some slots open now in Q2. Well, isn't that special? Oh, dear. So, slots open now in Q2. Go ahead and finish, Dan. We have uh, slots open now in Q2. Yeah, slots open for Q2. If you um, if you want to um, get... If there's a project that you, you care about, that you, you're interested in, or maybe you're involved with, and you want to get it on the show, the best way to do it is to uh, have someone from the project, preferably the project leader if possible, contact uh, Randall via email. You can email merlin at stonehenge.com. That's Merlin, as in the wizard. Uh, Merlin with a Y, though, as uh, at Stonehenge.com. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and we can start working on the schedule and getting you uh, on, on board. There are some slots open, as Randall said, um, and we're always interested to hear what projects you want to hear more about. 
and uh, yeah, and you can tell you can tell us more. Get in touch. Don't forget if you want to uh, you want to follow us on Twitter, you can find us uh, at Floss Weekly. If you want to find us on Google Plus, just type it in the search box and we're there. Uh, Facebook, I'm sure we're on there as well. We're all over the place, so go and uh, go and find us. Uh, if you want to find us on online on the web, you can go to twit.tv slash floss as well uh, and find us there. Uh, there's a chat room that's always buzzing away during the show. It's buzzing away right now at, uh, uh, at the Twit chat room, hash Twit live chat room. There's details of that on twit.tv if you want to check that out. Um, I think that's about it. I suppose I should say, if you want to find out anything, soon as Randall usually asks me what I want to mention or what I want to plug. Um, yeah, I, I, if you want to have a, you know, if you want to find out what I'm up to, be it music or hacking or uh, any other kind of geekery, I suppose, um, you can always head to danlynch.org, which is my website, and find uh, Twitter links and uh, Facebook links and all those other things and some other podcasts that I do as well. If you're interested in Creative Commons music, for example, you might want to check those out um, and uh, other things. So I'm just wondering whether Randall's going to make it back or not. I, uh, <laughs> I guess I might be wrapping up on my own. Um, hopefully um, he's going to get back online. So um, I'm frantically trying to think of something to fill with now. This could be a... Just rap. Okay, sorry. Okay. I, I thought you meant rap as in R-A-P. I won't rap. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks very much for uh, for watching and listening to Foss Weekly. Um, we'll be back next week with another show. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.